In this video we are going to look at Cinemachine in 2D games. We will cover setting up a 2D camera to track player movement. Limiting the areas players can explore using confiners for 2D. Creating zoom in and out effects. Creating trigger actions and a camera shake effect. This is the third video in the Cinemachine series. In the first two videos we have looked at Cinemachine basics with the different types of cameras and using Cinemachine with timeline for animated sequences. If you want to follow along with this video, download the Happy Harvest 2D sample project from the Unity Asset Store. Ensure that Cinemachine version 3.1 is installed from the package manager in the Unity registry. You can also download the 2D samples which cover more use cases for Cinemachine and 2D games. I'm going to show you how to build a 2D camera that tracks the movement of our player character in a smooth way using techniques like damping and dead zones. To do that, let's first clean up the existing camera that comes with the project. I am in the farm outdoor scene in the Happy Harvest Scenes folder. It has a main camera that is using an orthographic projection suitable for 2D games. Delete the CMV Cam 1, we will create our own. Go to Game Objects in the Machine and create a 2D camera. This requires a tracking target. Drag the character into the tracking target slot. We can see the lens is using an orthographic projection suitable for 2D games. For the position it is using a position composer. This allows the camera to track the target only on X and Y axes but ignore the Z axis. This restricts movement to two dimensions. The rotation control is set to none, so there is no rotation of the 2D camera. The camera is tracking the feet of the character. If you want, you can adjust the yellow tracking point by adjusting the Y target offset to centre the player on screen. During play mode, as the character walks with arrow keys or WASD keys, it keeps the character centred on screen. We can enable dead zone and click and drag the edges to define the size of the dead zone. If you click in the middle of the dead zone, you can drag it around the screen to a different position. But I'll leave it in the center. Now when the player walks in this central area, the camera does not move. When he touches the blue zones, the camera begins moving. This allows the player to reach the edges of the screen without being limited to the center of the screen. We could add extra motion to the camera by adjusting the damping. This slows down the time it takes for the camera to reach the target. At 1, it moves quickly to keep up with the player, but if I set the X and Y to 5, it will now take much longer. During play mode, the camera moves slowly to track the player, but notice the player can walk off the screen. To fix that, we can make the dead zone size a bit smaller, and enable hard limits. When the player reaches these red sections, the damping is ignored, and it keeps the player on screen at all times. During play mode we have damping in the blue section, but now the player cannot exit the screen when reaching the red section. Now we have the damping, but without losing the player when he reaches the edge. As the player reaches the edge of the map, the camera shows a lot of the surrounding water. 2D games make use of confiners to ensure the camera does not go outside the edges of the map. The white rectangle surrounding the character is the size of the camera. Everything inside that rectangle is being rendered in the game view. We can see how far over the edge of the map it is reaching. In the hierarchy there is a level bound object. With gizmo switched on we can see the green collider box. This is a confiner. It will stop the camera going beyond its edges. For this to work with your camera you must include a Cinemachine Confiner 2D component on the Cinemachine camera. Drag the level bounds into the bounding shape 2D slot. During play mode the camera now stops at the edge of the collider. We can see this in the scene view. We can also set confiners anywhere we like. Create an empty game object. I'll call it bounds1. Add a polygon collider 2D component. Ensure that gizmos are switched on in the scene view. It appears as this pentagon. Click on the edit collider button and now drag around the vertices to reshape it. To remove a vertex point, hold CTRL on the PC or COMMAND on the Mac and click on the red edge to remove it. Now we have a rectangle shape. Set this to a trigger. Drag the bounds 1 into the bounding shape 2D slot on the Cinemachine camera. 
Notice it appears yellow in the scene view with the Cinemachine camera selected. This is showing the area the camera can move in. With the game window docked, we can see the white camera rectangle stop when it hits the collider. The player does not stop, however, and can keep walking. To also restrict the player, you should add some box collider 2D objects around the edges of this confiner. If I reduce the size of the collider so that it is smaller than the white camera rectangle, the camera will not be able to move at all. The player moves and walks outside of the camera border. We can also combine multiple colliders into one. Create a new empty game object. To combine colliders it needs a rigid body 2D component. Set the type to static. Add a composite collider 2D component. This is what combines multiple colliders. Ensure this is set to a trigger. Right click on this object and add an empty game object as a child. Add either a box collider 2D or a polygon collider 2D. This can now be resized to a set space on the map. Set it as a trigger. In the composite operation drop down you have a few options. I will choose to merge. This will merge this collider with any others set as child objects. Create another empty game object as a child and repeat the procedure, defining a new box collider. I have created four child objects. Click on the parent object and change the geometry type to polygons. Now we can drag this object into the bound in shape 2D slot of the Cinemachine camera. We can see the yellow outlines of the area the camera can move within. Notice there's also a gap between the top collider and the bottom ones. On the Cinemachine window we can check the oversized window checkbox. This allows the Cinemachine camera to spill out over the edges of the confiner. The max window size can be set to a larger number to reduce the amount of calculations Unity has to do when calculating the space inside the confiner. It can't leave the confiner shape completely but is not restricted as strictly to the confiner shape. This allows the camera to jump over the gap between the collider shapes. During play mode we have restricted camera movement. Ensure to also add 2D box colliders around the confiner to also stop the player from exiting the window. We are now going to look at adding a camera zoom effect. The orthographic camera frustum is rectangular, it is defined by its width and height. Objects are displayed in two dimensional space when using an orthographic camera. To zoom in with an orthographic camera you adjust the orthographic size. This decreases the width and height of the frustum. A perspective camera has a pyramid shaped frustum. This presents objects in three dimensional space so that objects further away from the camera appear smaller. Zooming in in 3D space is achieved by adjusting the field of view. I will duplicate the Cinemachine camera with Ctrl and D or Edit and Duplicate. I'll rename it to Zoom. I'll set the Cinemachine camera zoom size to 2.5. Press Solo to see it in the scene view. You can preview the difference between the two cameras. The blend between Cinemachine cameras is handled by the Cinemachine brain on the main Unity camera. It is using an ease in and out blend mode. The time to complete the blend is 2 seconds. I'm going to reduce this to 1 second for a faster zoom in. Note that the default blend will affect blends for all Cinemachine cameras in your scene. You can use custom blends to affect some cameras and not others. See the first video in this series to find out how to set up custom blends. The link to that video can be found in the video description below. And when I switch on the zoom camera it now nicely zooms in to the close up. When working with sprites in 2D you can use the pixel perfect component. This ensures your pixel art remains crisp and clear at different resolutions and stable in motion. On the zoom camera add the Cinemachine pixel perfect component. Do the same for the other Cinemachine camera as well. On the main Unity camera add a pixel perfect camera component. Match the assets pixel per unit that you are using. In this case it is using 16. The reference resolution should be fine. Now we want an action to happen when the player approaches this barrel. This will trigger a zoom in. The Cinemachine camera with the highest priority becomes the active Cinemachine camera and takes control of the Unity camera. Other Cinemachine cameras that are switched on with a lower priority are in standby mode. 
They become active if their priority becomes greater than the other cameras, or if the currently active Cinemachine camera is switched off. I have a confined collider smaller than the camera rectangle to stop the camera from moving. This is not necessary for the zoom effect, but is something I will be using later. This confined set is in the bounding shape 2D of the Cinemachine camera, and I have oversized window unchecked. I have also created a polygon collider around the edges of the camera rectangle. This is not a trigger, so it will stop the player from leaving the screen. Create a new empty game object that I will call Barrel Trigger. Give it a Box Collider 2D component and resize it until it surrounds the barrel. Set this to a trigger. Add a Cinemachine Trigger Action component. This handles events when something enters or exits the trigger collider. I want the player character to trigger the action. Set the character's tag to player. It already has a rigid body 2D to handle collisions. Add a box collider 2D and set as a trigger. I'll set X and Y size to 2 and offset on the Y by 1. Now the trigger box surrounds the player. On the barrel trigger, check the is tag option and choose player. Now only the player can set off this action. From the action drop down we have various options. I will start with a priority boost. Drag the Cinemachine zoom camera into the target slot. I'll set the boost amount to 2. This will ensure this camera becomes the active camera, triggering the blend for the zoom. For object exit drag the Cinemachine zoom camera into the target slot and this time set the boost amount to minus 2, which will return it back to its default value of 0. The original Cinemachine camera will once again become active, triggering the zoom out. The original Cinemachine camera has a priority of 1, so that will be used when the game begins. Switch on the Cinemachine camera zoom and set the priority to 0 to begin with. During play mode the camera zooms in when the player is at the barrel and zooms back out when walking away. You can also call functions in code on trigger enter. I'm going to have a zoom in and then change the sprite of the barrel to a bag of wheat ready for a pickup. First I'm going to duplicate the original Cinemachine camera and call this new. This new camera will be used after exiting the barrel's trigger collider. Ensure the orthographic size is set to 5 to match the original. Drag the level bounds object into the bounding shape 2D slot of the Cinemachine Confiner 2D component. When this new camera is active the player will be able to walk anywhere on the map. Set the priority to 0 to begin with. Create a new script for the camera effect. Ensure it is using Cinemachine and System.Threading.Tasks namespaces. Create variables to store the blocker, pickup object and the pickup sprite. Create variables to store the Cinemachine cameras. Set a public float for the sprite change time when we change the sprite of the barrel. Create a zoom in function. Set the close up camera priority to 1 to make that the active camera triggering the zoom in. Set the original camera priority to 0 and that's when the machine camera goes into standby. Run a custom function called change sprite. Create a zoom out function. Set the close up camera and original camera priority to 0 and the two cinema machine cameras go into standby. Set the new camera priority to 3 to make that the active camera triggering the zoom out. The new camera will also allow the player to walk anywhere on the map. Then I'm going to destroy this game object, which is the trigger around the barrel. This ensure it only happens once. I want a delay before the barrel explodes and turns into a bag of wheat. Create an async function. This will wait before running the code, but does so asynchronously, so it doesn't interrupt the update loop. Set the await task delay, cast as an integer using the sprite change time value, which is currently 2.5 seconds multiplied by 1000 as this is running milliseconds. Get the sprite renderer from the pickup object and set the sprite to the pickup sprite. This will change the barrel into a bag of wheat. Then switch off the blocker. This allows the player to walk anywhere on the map. Now on the barrel trigger object we can set an object enter and object exit to both use an event only action. Attach the pickup script to the barrel trigger object. The blocker is the stage 1 blockers. The pickup object is this barrel. Drag in the three cameras. For the pickup sprite, search for wheat, and I am using this bag of wheat. 
add an entry in the on object interaction, dragging the barrel trigger as this adds a script on it. From the drop down, choose pick up and the zoom in function. Do the same for on object exit, but choose the zoom out function. During play mode, the player can't leave the screen. We get the zoom in and the barrel changes to a bag of wheat. As the player walks away, the camera zooms out and now I can walk anywhere on the map. We can add an extra effect when the barrel changes into a bag of wheat. I want a camera shake, almost like the barrel explodes to reveal the bag of wheat inside. On the barrel trigger, add a component of Cinemachine Impulse Source. You can create different types of impulse which produce various movement or shaking effects. There are a range of impulse shapes, or you can define your own. I will choose Explosion. You can set the length of time this impulse will last. I'll set this to 0.3 seconds. Now our Cinemachine Zoom, which is the active camera at the time of the impulse, needs a Cinemachine Impulse Listener component. I will check 2D distance. Gain is used to determine the power of the impulse. A gain of 1 multiplies all values by 1. A value less than 1 reduces the strength. A gain of greater than 1 increases it. For the reaction settings, you can add a secondary noise. This helps to make the shake more dynamic and less rigid. I will choose a 6D shake from the presets. This will work alongside the explosion noise to add random movement. To increase the effect of the 6D shake, increase the gain amounts. Now we need to call the impulse effect. We can do this in code. Get the component of Cinemachine Impulse Source and run the Generate Impulse function. During play mode, we now get a nice camera shake when the barrel changes into wheat. If you are interested in making 2D platform games, ensure the Cinemachine 2D samples are installed from the Package Manager. In the Samples and Cinemachine folder, you will now find 2D samples and the 2D platformer scene. This features a platformer camera 2D script and shows how to use Cinemachine components for use with a platform game, including some of the things we have covered in this video. In the next video, we are going to look at player input cameras, where you control the camera movement with player input. For more information, see the Unity documentation. Thanks for watching.